Hello, my name is Tucker Johnson, and I am your host today as we experience NIMSY Live, where we talk about the latest and greatest in translation, localization, internationalization, culturalization, and all that fun stuff global companies need to delight their international customers. On this program, we like to invite guests to like to have fun and also have some value to add for our audience of globalization professionals. I'm always eager to provide a platform to those with a good story or a good data set. So let us know if there are any topics you'd like covered or guests we should reach out to for future episodes. If you haven't already done so, make sure that you are liking and subscribing and following and all of that stuff to Nimsy Insights. We are coming to you live today on Facebook, LinkedIn, X, and maybe Twitch, a bunch of platforms. We're coming to you live everywhere. Most of most of you guys like to join us over on LinkedIn. So if you have a LinkedIn account, go join us on LinkedIn. That's where the party's at. And you can participate in the chat. If you leave comments during the live stream, we'll pull those up on stream and address any questions or comments that you may have. Before we get started today, I wanted to give a quick shout out to uh, the events, the many, many events that are happening in the language services industry. Our, our indus we're an industry that loves getting together and meeting at different events. And if you, like many of us, are putting together your event calendar and your travel itinerary for this year, go on over to nimsy.com forward slash events. And we maintain a calendar of a bunch of different events happening in our industry with more information about each of those. Um, if you don't have a travel budget, that's okay, because there's a lot of good online events that you can take advantage of as well. So nimsy.com forward slash events is where you want to go for that. So without further ado, we're going to get right into it today. Um, Today, in a world saturated with content options, understanding the unique strengths of video can be a game changer. Kane Lam will unravel the intricacies of choosing video as a content medium and discuss its unique value proposition. Why does video stand out among various content options and how does it impact your brand, business, or personal growth? He will also share his experience as a relative newcomer to the language services industry and provide tips to those, or perhaps just inspiration, to those that are thinking about starting a career in localization or making that jump over to the dark side and being in the localization industry. Kane Lamb is a brand new to the localization industry, and he is here today on Nimsy Live to share his experiences with the rest of you. Um, he's been in the hot seat for the last four or five months, and I'm very interested to hear about that journey. Kane, Kane, welcome to the show. Hucker, thank you for having me, and thanks for that intro. Yeah, of course. So you're new to the industry. I kind of want to start there and just have a, have a conversation because on this program, this is what the 107th episode of Nimsy Lab. I talked to a lot of people that have been around the industry for a long time. Um, and, you know, us old fogies, we just like to talk about the same things over and over again. It's not too often that I get to talk to someone that's kind of starting their career in the language services industry. Tell us a little bit about where'd you come from? What made the made you take the plunge into the language industry and how has it been so far how's it been treating you thanks thanks i'm i'm so grateful to be joining the language industry because coming to a new country it's been a bit of a a ride um i first started moving from toronto canada to france uh, about a year ago and so i was looking to join a new industry Previously, I was in legal tech. So, Tucker, I mean, legal tech, you we were talking about ball this. Game, right? It's, it's something completely different than what you can expect to do in France, since uh, you kind of have to speak French to have a lot of credibility. And well, I looked around. Uh, I looked at other industries. Languages is something that has always interested me. I speak... I speak... Uh, uh, a little bit of Cantonese with my parents and, uh, you know, studying French made me want to look at the local localization industry here. Uh, it was about the time when chat GPT was blowing up. And so, uh, especially for localization, uh, it seemed to make a, a big difference there. 
and I got a chance to work with Florian, a, a local French tech startup. Okay. Something that I wanted to join. I wanted to completely immerse myself in the French tech world. And so what a way to combine my previous experience in legal tech, basically a language based industry yeah. with something that I could add value to. Yeah. Not French tech, yeah. French, not French legal tech, but Hey, I, I'm a person who can, you can see it speak French, maybe speaks English, maybe speaks an Asian language, a localization just seems to fit. Yeah. I, I, you know, I kind of had this ongoing joke that I would say, it's not really a joke that a lot of us, especially as older folks that have been around for a little while is not many of us really dreamed of being a localization professional when we were growing up, right? It's like no one really knew that this industry existed. And a lot of us, like myself, we just kind of fell into it. And it's a real interesting industry because it's an industry that attracts people with common interests. Common interests like multiculturalism, common interests like multilingualism, speaking different languages and stuff like that. Nowadays, you can go out and study to become a localization project manager you can there's master's courses i know i i guess teach i i'm an adjunct down at the middlebury institute of international studies they have a great program down there right so it, it's a different it's a different scene nowadays but i always really encourage people come come over and check it out in the localization industry the water's the water's fine come dip your toe in <laughs> right so so welcome and now you've you've landed at a company called Checksub. Tell us a little bit about Checksub. Sure. Yeah, Checksub does a lot of things. Um, if you have videos, you want to spread them into a lot of languages, you check out Checksub. It check offers out Checksub. <laughs> uh, it offers subtitling. Uh, it can transcribe your videos. Uh, into into text, um, subtitles, yeah, in minutes, not weeks. Yep. We also add dubbing. So if you don't have a voice in them, you can add that too. And what's a big hit right now is lip syncing. Okay. So we have that too. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about that. So we talked about subtitles, we talked about uh, dubbing, and we talked about lip syncing. Um, give us a quick rundown on um, what, what's the difference? Subtitle, dubbing, voiceover versus dubbing versus lip syncing. Um, what are we looking at here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, if you're watching a, a foreign language film and, you know, you want to, like, read what's going on in your language, then that's what would come up you can read the captioning. And so that makes it really accessible for people who maybe have hard of hearing. There's that accessibility angle. Yep. yep. Um, there's also the, like, the language angle. Uh, what we're finding is that in some countries, people prefer dubbing more so than reading, just because it feels more natural. It doesn't have to rely on your ability to read, I don't know, like really fast. <laughs> right. Uh, you can just kind of understand it. And so that's the difference between like captioning, subtitling, and dubbing. Um, and then lip syncing is relatively new because when you used to watch a, a lot of movies that were dubbed, it, it kind of felt obvious. Yeah. Like it didn't really sound like that person's character. You kind of get used to it after a while, but it's definitely noticeable. Yeah. Even the yeah, best yeah. dubbing, you could still tell was dubbing. Right, exactly. And now maybe you won't be able to tell the difference at all because <laughs> dubbing is just going to sound like uh, it, it's going to be visually obscured. It's just going to look really natural. Yeah. Um, and how, also even... how's that changing? And because there's always been this service of lip syncing, um, whereas, but essentially in the past, what it, what it has been is okay. We're going to translate the script, and we're going to have a voiceover. Um, your a dubbing artist read the script and if you wanted lip syncing it was the kind of the best that we could do is to craft the script and to record the voiceover and voiceover is not the right word i know but to record the audio in a way that kind of lined up with the lips how they were already moving right 
Nowadays, mm. we're getting into the age of AI, and I'm hearing about these applications where you can actually have the video changed to make it look like they're actually talking. Is that just a pipe dream that I'm reading about, or is that actually happening nowadays? From what I can see, that's, that's what's happening today. Yeah. yeah. I don't know why it wasn't the case before. Maybe it was just, it's, it's just too difficult to change uh, Tom Cruise's mouth. To get him to re-record right. and maybe like move his mouth in a Spanish-speaking way as opposed to, right. to English. Um, and, and now we can do that with AI. Yeah. So it looks like a very promising time to be uh, in the localization industry because of that. Um, and then beyond that, it looks like, I mean, if you got a, a character like yourself, Tucker, and uh, it got dubbed into a foreign language, French, but with a really high squeaking uh, voice, not your voice at all. I mean, that would be a little bit of a jarring experience. Yeah. Um, and so voice cloning, um, I don't know if that's the right term too. I'm, I'm stumbling along this, this new tech uh, along with everybody else, I guess. Uh, that can use your voice in, in French. And so it would be like uh, if you were speaking naturally uh, in a tongue that I don't know if you've, you've studied French before or maybe even Chinese. So... Uh, what a great time to be in this industry. Yeah, I've been I've been tempted to do that. Just be I mean, I don't want to pay for it and I'd have to pay for a custom engine, right? Basically to be trained. But I think like personally, like I'd be a pretty good candidate for that because I <laughs> I have hours and hours and hours of myself talking the audio, right? Out there. So I think I, I probably could train an engine and hear myself speaking in Chinese or Cantonese, or, you know, German, French, whatever it may be. Well, maybe I can hook you up with that and uh, yeah, right. see, how you, see how you look, see how you sound. Like. I want to hook, hook myself up so that I can train Siri to talk like me. So when I'm talking to Siri <laughs> or Alexa, then it'll, it'll just sound like me. <clears throat> yeah, train well, uh, your friend's series, and then that way they can hear your voice on, on loop. Right. So, I mean, you brought it up, AI, and that's kind of where this conversation has been going here. For AI, I, especially when in the terms of multimedia, multimedia localization, um, what I've noticed is what it's doing is it's really enabling a lot more content to be localized. It's kind of doing what machine translation did for the translation services industry a long time ago and is continuing to do, which is, you know, when machine translation came on the scene, it was... You, you know, we, we get the, the people, people start freaking out and saying, oh, we're going to be replaced, you know, and there's not going to be a need for translators anymore. And, and sure, I mean, there's been translators that, uh, you know, certain jobs that have been replaced by machine translation. I don't want to downplay that, but we're still around. And what's really happened is that rather than eliminating the need for human translators, machine translation has just enabled the industry, the world to translate more content because content that previously wasn't high value enough to pay for a human translator. Well, shoot, we can run that through machine translation and have a machine translation translated version, right? Nowadays, it's um, kind of the same thing. And I've really seen this like over the last five years with the um, improvements in automated transcription and automated subtitling and stuff like that. So I don't know if I checked the box. It doesn't look like I did. I'm watching watching us live on, on this right now. But when I when we create cool. a um when we create a event like this on LinkedIn, there's a box that you can check and for automated subtitles. And it's great. Because, um, as you mentioned earlier, there's an accessibility component to it as and to having subtitles as well. And like just being real, like I wish, I wish I had the money that every piece of video that MZ puts out, we could have subtitles on it and pay for human subtitles. But most companies aren't in that position, right? But having the automated subtitles allows us to kind of have a little bit of an accessibility. Um, component yeah, yeah, I, to it. I totally agree. Uh, we were we were speaking to this post production house uh, back in my hometown in Toronto. Okay, <laughs> and 
yeah, they were debating on whether they should take on this product, uh, this project from from Ukraine or Russian, mm -hmm. uh, because they were getting quotes for like 20, 30 K. Yeah. Um, and it's like, it's, it's way out of their budget. We're, we're doing a documentary here. And, right. Uh, there's a bunch of footage. There's like 40, 50 hours of, of footage. We don't speak Ukrainian. We don't speak, right. you know, Russian. The principal doesn't. So, you know, like how can we take on this job? Right. Like there, there's no way like, um, and so in comes Checksub, and we can offer them a way for them to easily understand uh, this ultimately foreign language. Uh, they had some budget left over for um, for a, for a Russian speaker who spoke Ukrainian as well. Okay. And so that created a job. Uh, I mean, like uh, that created something that every party was happy about there. Yeah. And now they're onwards to to do more jobs like that too. Uh, we talked to other people uh, out in out in Brazil, where they say the same thing. Uh, there's soap operas, there's TV shows where they would pay, um, you know, ten, twenty dollars per minute, and they charge fifty. Yeah. So I, how can they how can they realistically take on that job? And, and what happens is I, I don't know exactly what happens. Maybe you can let me know. Uh, those soap operas just don't get translated. They don't. Or, yeah, no. yeah, and so they don't get the level of attention that they might want to have. Yeah, um, especially with world events, people might be curious what the culture is like, see things from both sides. Well, I mean, it's globalization, and with it's becoming more and more common. I say they don't get translated. Historically, they haven't gotten translated, right? But it's you know, with technology, technology is lowering the barrier to entry for localizing your product. Whether your product is a soap opera, whether your product is you know a YouTube channel with 500 subscribers, right? Like there was a time when if I have a YouTube channel with a thousand subscribers, like there's no way I'm going to pay to have that translated into, and I'm a big YouTube guy. I love YouTube, right? I, I spend way too much time on YouTube. Um, it depresses me when I look at my screen time report from my iPhone. Um, you and me both. Yeah, exactly. Right. I, that's why I don't look at it. That's the that's the hint. Yeah. That's the trick. You just don't look at it. Right. But you know, there was a time when I remember creators would the creators that did have their content localized into other languages. A, it would be via subtitles only. Right. Rare, rarely, and still rarely do um, creators have multi language channels, channels in multiple languages, and. Mm. B, those subtitles were usually crowdsourced. They were usually fan generated. Like people in their audience would just translate those for free as, as a community service effort. And nowadays you've got services out there that if I'm a you know, small to medium sized creator on YouTube or any other platform, I guess it doesn't really matter. And I want to add subtitles. I want to add dubbing. I want to add whatever it may be. It's much more accessible these days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think even YouTube, you can upload uh, your your video onto YouTube. Mm -hmm. If anybody's looking for a hack to to get subtitles, they do it within like a minute. Yeah, uh, I know. Within they do an hour. Free. I've done that before. <laughs> I call that the poor man's transcription, <laughs> right? Because I I use a service called if I really want a transcription, I use Rev dot com is one of the ones that i use and it does a decent job and you can have it human reviewed so there's a quality control but yeah the poor man's transcription is you just upload yeah. your video to youtube and it'll write the english transcription for you on it yeah yeah rev's great i think their their price uh their prices are one of the the better ones too and and the human human component kind of gives people both sides of the options so yeah. and pretty quick yeah pretty quick mm. so mm. specifically what what kind of where is checksub operating with since that's your expertise here like or who are your clients i should ask who are our clients yeah. we have a big focus in the media industry we also have a big focus in the uh enterprises i mean there's really like marketing of course uh community Communications is an interesting one too, and learning and development, of course. Yep. Um, and then there's maybe one or two more, but it's if I had to divide the world in two, it would be 
yeah, like those are the two biggest producers of, of videos in our little world. Um, yeah. With media producers, people on YouTube, usually the big conglomerates uh, will get a little bit more value out of us since, you know, they can't really upload one YouTube video at a time to get those transcriptions. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, like with profitability, with, with getting more revenue on the table, uh, they're measuring, they're starting to measure on, on posts per day. Uh, hundreds of posts per day is, is now a, a new goal that oh, they can wow. have. Yeah. Um, because yeah, you're right. Like, uh, the barrier is pretty low for individual creators, mm -hmm. but hey, the upside is is, is quite a lot too. Yeah. And so companies like uh, we see companies like the Soul Publishing, like the the Soul Publishing. Who is that? Yeah. Well, whenever you watch YouTube videos, those five minute crafts. Okay. What yeah, kind yeah. of meal can you do in five minutes? Like, yeah. yeah. That's impossible. Like it takes me thirty minutes just to wash the dishes. Are you kidding? Get the dishes out. Like you're gonna do that in five minutes. Um, yeah, well, well, they want a four and a half minutes to find the can opener. <laughs> exactly. And another three minutes to microwave the soup. <laughs> Why? We got a a true chef there with yeah, you. Exactly. Uh, um, yeah. So they localize their uh, their. They have like a internal way to, to like localize and in subtitle as well as uh, dub and then they have a, a bunch of different channels as well um and so so yeah creators like that uh we really want to you know get in front of them yeah uh we're seeing that especially if you're in a secondary language market um like france secondary yeah. as in hey maybe in the in the ad revenue space they don't pay the most yeah. if you're making french content compared to english uh, and they want to internationalize and they want to go into English. Yeah. Well, hey, how can you do that in a profitable way? Is it getting a guy yeah. like uh, uploading it to YouTube one by one so you, so you can save that like transcription fee? Uh, might not be the best scaling growth I, strategy there. That's probably where most people start <laughs> though, right? Because most people don't, they don't realize that there's scalable solutions out there when they first start playing around with it. Very much the same with translation. Like when most companies start thinking about translation, it's, you know, the, the logical step for somebody that doesn't know there's this industry called the localization industry. Logical step is I'm going to hire a translator or like, oh, Cheryl in bookkeeping speaks Spanish. I mean, Cheryl's not a very Spanish name. My example could be better, but you know what I'm saying? Like they, they start doing it like that and quickly realize this isn't very scalable. And right. it's leading to some other challenges. And that's when they start looking around for the more scalable solution. Well, or, you know, Cheryl could be a, a Spanish person who just really wants to uh, be like one of the locals. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and maybe she really mastered wants to learn. Her, mastered her dual lingo. Well, I've seen that before, too. It's like, hey, Cheryl in accounting took three years of high school Spanish. She can translate it for us. Right. Yeah, and that she can that makes the, the program too. Yeah, that makes <laughs> translators cringe when they hear when they hear stuff like that. Right. Well, but then there's the other side of the spectrum too, which is well, we'll just machine translation everything. Machine translation exists; it's fine, so we don't need to pay for translation. We'll just have we'll run everything through Google Translate. Right. So there's the other side of the spectrum there too, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but. Uh, the work that you guys do over at Checksub, it's mostly AI driven, right? It's mostly machines. Or do you have That's human inter do you have any human interaction at all? Not okay. a single one. We, even on our team, we have like so that's what people. that's what you're we're, focused uh, on. Yeah. We're, you know, we're 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 heavily into the AI. I think the idea is basically Tucker, you know, we're working with somebody who is in the media industry mm -hmm. who's used to working with a bunch of freelancers. Yeah. Yeah. I mean like what, what am I gonna do? Like hire another freelancer to in, in your industry who speaks your lingo yeah. and then charge you uh, something on top of that. I mean, I guess we could do that. And I think, uh, well, there's the vendor costs. The I mean, there's what you're paying the freelancer, but then there's also the very real cost of managing those freelancers. Right. That's true. And anyone who's ever maintained a team, um, especially an outsourced freelance team knows that it's time consuming. And, you know, you have one freelancer, fine. You have two, okay, three. 
you know, you get five, six freelancers. Well, shoot. And now I'm looking into hiring a project manager just to manage or a vendor manager just to manage the work, right? So how much money am I really saving going, going the freelancer route, right? Right, right. Yeah, I think that's a question that, you know, some clients will, uh, that's the beauty of choice. I mean, some yeah. people like steak, other people like uh, steak with caviar, yeah. right? <laughs> right. And you have like uh, all the options out there. Um, the, the, the clients uh, we work with that work really well have a, have a vision on what they want to do. You know, we can't, we can't execute that vision. We can't help you plan that vision out. Um, but if you already have that vision, um, yeah. We can show you how to use Checksub. We can show you how you can plan it with your your favorite freelancer or set of freelancers. Uh, you can jump on uh, the tool here, and uh, a lot of easy features there for 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 freelancers, uh, for linguists. Focus all the errors into one spot, or where we think there are errors in mm -hmm. in the output language. Um, that way, you can dedicate your time just in those problem areas, as opposed to reviewing the entire. 10 hour live stream. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's kind of the idea. <clears throat> and what, what are you guys, um, cause this is a big thing. There's really fascinating advancements happening in this area too, which is synthetic voices, right? Mm. Um, the automated subtitling or the text to speech, not text to speech, speech to text has been, you know, like I said, it, it's amazing right now like most like google meet zoom whatever plat microsoft teams mo most systems even have it built in now where it does a really good job of just transcribing stuff that's happening kind of lagging behind that has always been the text-to-speech or the synthetic voices that are happening and we talked about it earlier how you can custom train um a, a voice to sound like you or to sound like someone else specifically but what is does check sub dipping into that well yeah or kind of waiting to see what's happening with the synthetic voices uh synthetic voices mean a couple of things to me okay. you know look with uh with with i guess like a new tech it's like everybody has uh different things and you know what let me yeah. stumble through with, with you tucker um synthetic voices mean for me there's a set of voices that's in a library. They're AI generated voices. Right. They're not like, you know, my voice in, in a different language. I would call that like voice cloning. Um, yeah, we, we totally have a, a library full of voices. In, in certain languages, we have more English. We got different accents, English, Australian, I don't know, like South of America. So I don't know, like that's an accent. I'm sure each state may, might have their own accent too, but but we have variations there. But if you want like Sukili, well, I mean, like we have male, female. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's a choice. Um, it might not be like uh, as diverse as, as English. Um, and then, yeah, and then in voice, voice cloning, we, yeah. we have a way where we can. Oh, so you uh, actually do the voice cloning? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, very Absolutely. cool. Absolutely. Very cool. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it's pretty sweet. Uh, to to you know if 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 you haven't seen it before it's basically yeah your voice in a different language and um you know when i first saw it uh with heijen ooh, that was incredible like we had to have it so now it's out it's uh it's something that i think is setting up the expectations for what you have to have now <laughs> Yeah, and that's the thing. The more this stuff gets adopted, the the less it becomes a nice to have, and the more that it becomes a reality, uh, or right. it becomes like a real like. If I don't do this, then I'm falling behind my competition, right? Yeah, you know, just yeah. thinking back, you know, at one, just using translation as the as the comparison here is, um, you know, at one point it was you know, translating content into another language was kind of a nice to have. Right. Mm. And nowadays it's kind of a requirement. If you have a website, guess what? You're a global brand, <laughs> right? <laughs> like maybe not, maybe you're not shipping products all over the world, but people from all over the world are, can find you. So it's not a question of like, am I, 
is my content in front of global users? It's a question of what is my global user's perception of my content right. that's already out there. So translation right. nowadays is it's not it's kind of more and more a requirement. And you know, people are looking to differentiate. Video's big right now, um, especially from a marketing standpoint, right? Um, it's podcasts. Podcasts have completely proliferated. You know, every everybody has a freaking podcast these days. Hmm. I remember like 10 years ago, like my business partner, Renato, and my, my, my friend, Michael Stevens, they started this podcast called Globally Speaking. And I mean, that was back in the day when it was super cool to have a pod, like they were the guys, right? They, and there's been other people that have been doing it out there. Um, so I don't mean disrespect to them, but I just know these guys. And it's like, wow, they have a podcast. That's really cool. And nowadays, everybody has a podcast. Everybody has a podcast out there. You know, Nimsy Live, this is one podcast. Shoot, Nimsy has multiple podcasts. Like Multilingual has a podcast, our sister company, Multilingual Magazine. So there's just so much content out there. And so well, I'll give you an example. It's like something like from an accessibility standpoint. Multilingual is a print magazine. It's been around for 20 years. Um, we have They have online news, online news stories every day. They're publishing stuff about the language services industry. <coughs> and um, recently, you know, the way people, you know, especially in the last five years, not everybody likes reading anymore. We're spoiled. This is the age of audiobooks and whatnot, right? So people don't necessarily read the news anymore. A lot of people like to listen to the news, right? So one thing Multilingual has done is for every single article that they have, out there, they'll have the audio of it. And That's really smart. Yeah, it's great. And so, and they publish it as a podcast, so you can just subscribe to the podcast on it. But um, it's gotten very popular. It's kind of one of those things. They just thought, okay, we'll just you know play around with this and you know see if people like it. Well, shoot, people really liked it. So, however, you know to have a um, have a person, you know, recording that for every single article, it can get really, um, really costs, it, it can get expensive, right? So even they, they played around with, here, I'll just bring it up on screen here. Here's an article from Multilingual, um, a jar of extra, extra Virgil, is that a typo? Did I bring up a Multilingual article with a typo? No. <laughs> I, I think is, that's is that one of those on ways words. where you can uh, get people to zone in and like, you know, break their train of thought and, and just really pay attention. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think that's a play on words. There. I haven't read this. Looking for something good to read? Try the inside of the... Yeah, but I don't know if they'd be able to hear this. Can... This yeah. is Localization Today, yeah, so a this... podcast from Multilingual Media this is covering the most relevant Mario daily Life. news in the language who's actually recording it, but I know we have used synthetic voices before. It was completely text-to-speech. Oh. You just might find something yeah. interesting etched into the glass. In all seriousness, that's exactly what a team of archaeologists working in Cordoba, I can see the bar Spain, moving, although discovered a few years oh, ago. Oh, you can't hear. I don't have it turned on for you. Sorry. The fragment of an it. amphora that on once contained olive oil, inscribed on the inside with a brief snippet of a Virgil poem written in Latin. Yeah, but Their findings you know, you hear are that? that's, that's a synthetic voice. I'll turn it down now. That's a synthetic voice, yeah. but it's pretty that's darn pretty good. Cool. It's pretty yeah. darn good. Like, I wouldn't want to listen to that for two hours. My brain would get tired. But no. I'll listen to that for three, three minutes and four can seconds. Can you tell, though, that that's a synthetic voice? Like, when you listen to it? I know I you tell. know it as a synthetic voice, but... No, actually, I don't know it. To... <laughs> I, yeah. I don't really... I don't know what they do over multilingual. <laughs> I just... <laughs> I just pay the bills, but um, I I can hear it. I can hear that mm. that's a synthetic voice, and I also right. know the employees, and it doesn't sound like any of them. But <laughs> does someone who's not a language geek and a technology geek would they be able to tell that that's a synthetic voice? Probably not. Probably not. No. Well, the numbers are showing that. I mean, it's 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 working well. So yeah, there you go. So anyways, sorry, I kind of derailed our conversation here. We've, we've gone all over the place. We've talked about subtitles. We've talked about dubbing, lip syncing, synthetic voices, AI, Kane. What else? What am I missing? What am I forgetting to ask you? Otherwise, we're going to start wrapping this up here. 
you got to check out the the checks up website we're offering a free trial oh <laughs> let me pull it up you gotta plug it you gotta plug it check so no no credit card required required just start that free trial and you can get right in there and who, um, who are we talking to who would be a good who's who's gonna go no. start a free trial yeah you know like there's a ton of options out there i mean if you're you're doing a uh, one face to the camera you're speaking there's a ton of choices okay. checks up is is one of those great choices if you're doing something a little bit more i don't know if you're telling a story where you need a lot of background music there's in there's cuts in and out to historical figures and blah 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 well checks up as a, has a way for you to get really deep into those voices so you can edit each track so maybe your background music isn't translated from I don't know, Shakira to Shakira Chinese. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, that would be a plus. <laughs> and then you can, you know, if you want, um, I don't know, like if you want to keep uh, Abe Lincoln, I don't know if we actually have uh, footage of Abe Lincoln speaking, but let's say a beloved president. Uh-huh. Uh, well, well, yeah, you can kind of keep his voices in English. Yeah. I don't know. If, to... I don't know if Abraham Lincoln did many live streams. No, not even in black and white. Yeah, probably not. I don't know, the bit rate was <laughs> horrible back then. Yeah, so I just right. I just signed up as you were chatting there. I just signed up. I'm in. Click to upload. Okay, easy, beautiful. Yeah, it's, it's as easy as that, people. That's it. That's it. Um, yeah, and then otherwise, uh, join Tucker with Nimsy Live. Yeah, super easy to sign up as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. We make it easy. I was telling you before this, like my, my number one goal is make it easy for the guests to come on Nimsy Live. Mm -hmm. And, you know, let's, let's talk. Let's talk. So if you guys out there have any suggestions on people you'd like to see on Nimsy Live, send them our way. So, Kane, it's been a pleasure to meet you and to get to talk to you today and geek out kind of about all of this different video related stuff. I really appreciate you coming on the show. I feel the same way. Thanks for having us uh, on here and congratulations to all your successes. Yeah, likewise, likewise. All right, I will take us out here. Ladies, gentlemen, chat, we are out of time today. If you enjoyed this Nimsy Live, join us next week. Is it next week? Yes, January 31st on Wednesday when we are talking to the folks over at Alia. That's the European Language Industry Association. Great association, great association. I've been to some of their events, I was keynote at one of their events. And they just do really bang up work. And they're hosting their Aaliyah Together um, event coming up here. So we're going to be talking about that, what you can kind of expect from that. Um, join us next week. Sign up. You can go to our LinkedIn page, NMC LinkedIn page, go to the events tab, and register so that you'll get automatically notified. I appreciate our guest today, Kane. I appreciate my colleagues here at NMC Insights doing all the hard work so I can have these conversations. And I appreciate everyone in our industry who's filling out surveys, scheduling briefings, and all of that stuff so that we can include you in our published industry research. And finally, I appreciate you, the audience, who are joining us live today. All of the questions, comments, and especially criticisms in chat, which I never once brought up, and I apologize for that. But if you're watching the recording, you can still leave comments and start a conversation that way. Go follow Kate Lamb. Go follow CheckSub on LinkedIn. And of course, follow Nimsy Insights. And I look forward to next time. Cheers.